The Olmec civilization, one of the earliest complex societies in Mesoamerica, thrived along the Gulf Coast of what is now modern-day Mexico, primarily during the formative period, roughly from 1400 BC to 400 BCE. The Olmec are often regarded as the mother culture of Mesoamerica because they laid the foundation for many subsequent cultures in the region. They are best known for their distinctive artistic style, characterized by colossal stone heads and intricate jade carvings, which showcase their sophisticated craftsmanship and cultural significance. The Olmec society was organized around ceremonial centers, such as San Lorenzo and La Venta, where they built impressive pyramids, plazas, and other architectural structures. Their religious and spiritual beliefs are evident in these sites, as they created ritual spaces and left behind intricate sculptures representing deities and mythological figures. The Almec also had an agricultural economy based on maize, corn, beans, and squash cultivation, which allowed them to support a growing population. While the Almec civilization eventually declined, its influence endured through trade networks and cultural diffusion, impacting later Mesoamerican societies like the Maya and Aztec, who adopted and adapted many Almec cultural elements, including their calendrical and religious systems. The colossal heads of the Almec civilization are among the most iconic and enigmatic archaeological artifacts in Mesoamerica. Carved from massive basalt boulders, these enormous heads are a testament to the Almec's remarkable sculptural prowess and artistic achievement. Standing as tall as 10 feet and weighing several tons, these stone heads depict distinctive individuals with unique facial features, including prominent features such as broad noses, full lips, and expressive eyes. Each head is painstakingly carved with great attention to detail, showcasing the Almec's exceptional skill in working with hard stone materials. The purpose and significance of these colossal heads remain a subject of scholarly debate. Some theories suggest that they represent revered leaders or rulers of the Almec civilization, while others propose a religious or ritualistic function. Regardless of their original purpose, these colossal heads serve as a profound symbol of the Almec's cultural and artistic sophistication, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to intrigue and inspire those who study ancient Mesoamerican civilizations. The Almec people cultivated a variety of crops, with maize, corn, being the cornerstone of their diet. They developed innovative techniques to maximize agricultural productivity, including the use of raised fields, terraced farming, and drainage systems. These methods allowed them to efficiently manage the challenging terrain of the tropical lowlands and yield substantial harvests. Additionally, the Almec practiced crop rotation, which helped maintain soil fertility and prevent soil depletion. They cultivated other essential crops like beans, squash, and chili peppers, creating a diversified and nutritionally balanced diet. This agricultural surplus not only supported the Almec population but also contributed to their capacity for trade and exchange with neighboring cultures. Overall, the Almec's sophisticated agricultural practices laid the foundation for their social complexity and cultural achievements, serving as a crucial aspect of their enduring legacy in Mesoamerican history. The Almec civilization displayed a sophisticated understanding of calendar systems and astronomy, showcasing their advanced knowledge of celestial events. They developed one of the earliest known Mesoamerican calendars, often referred to as the Almec calendar. This calendar was based on a combination of solar and ritual cycles, signifying their awareness of both agricultural and ceremonial timing. It featured a 260-day ritual calendar known as the Tsokin, which was vital for scheduling religious ceremonies and events, as well as a 365-day solar calendar called the Hob, which corresponded closely to the agricultural cycle. The precise synchronization of these calendars allowed the Almec to align their religious and agricultural activities with astronomical events, demonstrating their intimate connection to the heavens. In terms of astronomy, the Almec exhibited a keen interest in celestial bodies, especially the movement of the sun and moon. Their knowledge of the solar year, lunar cycles, and the positions of celestial objects in the night sky is evident in their architectural alignments. 
Some Omic ceremonial centers, such as La Venta, display a deliberate orientation towards celestial events, such as the solstices and equinoxes, suggesting a ritual significance tied to astronomical observations. These early pursuits in calendar making and celestial observation laid the groundwork for the more complex calendar systems and celestial knowledge that would later characterize Mesoamerican cultures like the Maya and Aztecs. La Venta and San Lorenzo are two of the most prominent archaeological sites associated with the Olmec civilization, which thrived in ancient Mesoamerica from approximately 1400 BC to 400 BCE. La Venta, situated in the swampy lowlands of modern-day Tabasco, Mexico, is particularly renowned for its colossal stone sculptures, including the iconic Olmec heads. The city, which was inhabited from around 900 BC to 400 BC, featured a complex layout with earthen mounds, plazas, and ceremonial structures. The Olmec at La Venta practiced advanced engineering to transport massive stone blocks from distant quarries, highlighting their impressive organizational skills. This site also showcased evidence of ritual activities, including offerings and deposits of greenstone artifacts, suggesting its importance as a religious and ceremonial center within the Olmec heartland. San Lorenzo, located in the same region as La Venta, is one of the earliest Olmec settlements dating back to around 1400 BCE. It is characterized by its large earthen pyramids and a central plaza. Similar to La Venta, San Lorenzo features colossal stone heads and monuments, which attest to the Olmec's mastery of monumental sculpture. San Lorenzo played a significant role in the early development of Olmec civilization and was likely a center of political and religious authority. Recent archaeological research has revealed complex patterns of urban planning, with evidence of residential and ceremonial areas. Both La Venta and San Lorenzo offer invaluable insights into the social, artistic, and architectural achievements of the Olmec civilization, which laid the foundation for subsequent Mesoamerican cultures. The Olmec civilization was known for its extensive trade networks, and two of the most valuable commodities exchanged were jade and obsidian. Jade, a precious green stone, and obsidian, a sharp volcanic glass, played crucial roles in Olmec society and their trade relationships with neighboring regions. Jade, sourced primarily from the Matagua River Valley in modern-day Guatemala, was highly prized by the Olmec for its beauty and symbolism. Jade objects such as figurines, jewelry, and ornaments held significant religious and ceremonial importance. The Olmec would have traded these precious items both within their society and with neighboring cultures, solidifying their status as a cultural and economic hub in ancient Mesoamerica. Obsidian, on the other hand, was used for its practical utility in toolmaking and weapons. While the Olmec did not have natural deposits of obsidian in their immediate vicinity, they established trade routes to obtain this vital resource from distant sources, likely in the Mexican highlands. The exchange of obsidian allowed the Olmec to create sharp cutting tools and weapons, enhancing their agricultural productivity and possibly contributing to their influence over neighboring regions. In this way, the Olmec's trade in jade and obsidian played a pivotal role in both their culture and their interactions with other societies in Mesoamerica. Ritual bloodletting was a prominent and symbolic practice in the Olmec civilization, reflecting their deep religious and spiritual beliefs. It involved the deliberate drawing of blood, often from the tongue or other parts of the body, as part of ceremonial and religious rituals. Bloodletting rituals were performed by priests and rulers and were usually conducted in conjunction with other sacred ceremonies. Bloodletting served multiple purposes in the Olmec culture. Firstly, it was a means of offering a sacred and vital substance, blood, to the gods as a form of communication and appeasement. The Olmec believed that through bloodletting, they could establish a connection with the divine and seek favor or blessings. Additionally, bloodletting was associated with the concept of sacrifice and the idea of self-sacrifice for the greater good of the community. It was a demonstration of devotion and a way to maintain harmony with the spiritual world. The symbolic and spiritual significance of ritual bloodletting persisted throughout Mesoamerican history, influencing later civilizations like the Maya and Aztecs. 
The Almec script, also known as the Almec writing system, remains one of the most intriguing and mysterious aspects of the Almec civilization. Although the Almecs are considered one of the earliest Mesoamerican cultures, their script is one of the most primitive and has not been fully deciphered. The script primarily consists of symbols and glyphs carved into stone monuments, pottery, and other artifacts. These symbols are often abstract and depict various motifs, including human figures, animals, and abstract designs. Scholars have made limited progress in deciphering the Almec script, primarily because of the scarcity of texts and the absence of a bilingual text, a text with known translations into another language. While some believe that the script may contain elements of both logographic and phonetic writing, its true nature and meaning remain largely enigmatic. The Almec script's decipherment could provide invaluable insights into the Almec civilization's language, history, and culture, potentially shedding light on the influences and contributions of this ancient culture to subsequent Mesoamerican civilizations, such as the Maya and Aztecs. The Ancient Greek Civilization flourishing from roughly the 8th century BCE to the 4th century BCE, is a bedrock of Western civilization, renowned for its profound contributions to virtually every facet of human knowledge and culture. Centered in the Eastern Mediterranean, the Greek city-states, including Athens, Sparta, and Corinth, were crucibles of innovation and intellectual exploration. They pioneered the concept of democracy, fostering citizen participation in governance, and laid the groundwork for modern political systems. Greek philosophers such as Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle shaped the foundations of Western philosophy, ethics, and political thought, while playwrights like Sophocles and Euripides produced timeless tragedies. The Greeks excelled in science, mathematics, and medicine, with luminaries like Pythagoras and Archimedes making groundbreaking discoveries. Their artistic legacy is immortalized in stunning sculptures, monumental architecture like the Parthenon, and the epic poetry of Homer, exemplified by the Iliad and the Odyssey. Furthermore, the Olympic Games, initiated by the Greeks, continue to symbolize global sporting unity. The Greek civilization's profound impact reverberates through the ages, influencing art, science, politics, and philosophy for millennia. The Greek language became the lingua franca of knowledge, and their cultural achievements formed the backbone of classical education. Alexander the Great's conquests spread Greek culture across vast territories, creating the Hellenistic world. This civilization's intellectual curiosity and insatiable quest for knowledge laid the foundation for modern Western thought, imbuing it with an enduring legacy that continues to shape contemporary society in fields ranging from governance and ethics to science, mathematics, and the arts. The ancient Greek civilization stands as a beacon of human achievement, a testament to the boundless potential of the human mind, and a wellspring of inspiration for generations to come. The Minoan civilization, which flourished on the island of Crete in the eastern Mediterranean from around 2600 BC to 1400 BC, is renowned for its advanced and enigmatic culture. Named after the legendary King Minos, this civilization left an enduring mark on the ancient world. Minoan society was characterized by impressive palace complexes, such as the Palace of Knossos, which featured intricate architecture, frescoes, and an advanced sewage system. These palaces served both administrative and religious purposes, suggesting a centralized authority and a complex social structure. The Minoans were accomplished seafarers and engaged in extensive trade networks throughout the Aegean region. They are believed to have played a pivotal role in the development of early maritime trade routes. The Minoan script, known as Linear A, remains largely undeciphered, leaving much of their written records a mystery. Their artistic achievements, including vibrant frescoes, pottery, and intricate jewelry, reflect a deep appreciation for nature, religion, and the arts. Minoan religion involved the veneration of female deities and rituals performed in sacred caves and temples. The civilization is also notable for its mysterious decline, often attributed to natural disasters or invasions, leaving behind a captivating legacy that continues to intrigue archaeologists and historians. The Mycenaean civilization, which thrived in ancient Greece from around the late 17th century BC to the 12th century BC, was a powerful and influential culture that succeeded the Minoans. 
The Mycenaeans are best known for their fortified palaces, which included the renowned citadel of Mycenae itself. These palace complexes, characterized by massive stone walls, served as centers of governance, administration, and trade. Mycenaean society was militaristic, and their extensive fortifications suggest a need for defense against external threats. They were also skilled in engineering and architecture, as seen in the construction of the famous Lion Gate at Mycenae. The Mycenaeans are significant for their role in shaping early Greek culture and for their contributions to the development of the Greek language, which evolved from their Linear B script. Their extensive trade networks connected them with other Mediterranean civilizations, leading to cultural exchanges that influenced art, religion, and technology. However, the Mycenaean civilization eventually experienced a decline, marked by the widespread destruction of their palaces, often attributed to the mysterious events of the Late Bronze Age collapse around 1200 BCE, which included factors like invasions, economic disruptions, and societal upheaval. Despite their fall, the Mycenaeans laid the foundation for the emergence of classical Greek civilization and played a crucial role in the rich tapestry of ancient Mediterranean history. Classical Greece, spanning roughly from the 5th to the 4th centuries BC, represents one of the most transformative and celebrated periods in human history. This civilization, centered in city-states like Athens and Sparta, witnessed an unprecedented flourishing of art, philosophy, politics, and culture that laid the foundation for many aspects of modern Western civilization. The hallmark of classical Greece was its profound intellectual and cultural achievements. In Athens, the birthplace of democracy, citizens actively participated in decision-making, shaping the world's first known democratic system. This era produced a pantheon of influential philosophers, including Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, who explored profound questions about ethics, governance, and the nature of reality. Greek playwrights like Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides created enduring dramatic works, while sculptors like Phidias produced masterpieces such as the Parthenon sculptures in Athens. Classical Greece's legacy extends to its remarkable art and architecture, with iconic structures like the Parthenon standing as timeless symbols of beauty and innovation. Greek military might, epitomized by the Spartans' disciplined warrior society, and their cultural achievements combined to create a civilization that not only thrived in its time but continues to inspire and influence the world to this day. The architectural wonders of ancient Greece are a testament to the civilization's unparalleled contributions to the field of architecture. At the heart of Greek architecture are the majestic temples, with the Parthenon in Athens standing as the quintessential example. Constructed in the 5th century BC under the guidance of the renowned architect Phidias, the Parthenon is a Doric masterpiece dedicated to the goddess Athena. Its harmonious proportions, use of the golden ratio, and intricate friezes exemplify Greek ideals of beauty and balance. The Parthenon's enduring influence on architectural design and aesthetics is profound, with its iconic columns and pediments serving as an enduring symbol of classical architecture. Another remarkable feat of Greek architecture is the theater, exemplified by the Theater of Epidaurus. This well-preserved theater, constructed in the 4th century BC, showcases the Greeks' expertise in acoustics and design. With its semicircular seating arrangement and advanced sound engineering, it could accommodate thousands of spectators while ensuring that even the softest whispers on stage could be heard in the highest rows. Greek theaters became the birthplace of dramatic arts, hosting timeless works by playwrights like Sophocles and Aristophanes. Their influence can be seen in the design of modern theaters and amphitheaters, underscoring the enduring legacy of Greek architectural innovation and artistic excellence. The water mill, an ingenious invention of the ancient Greeks, marked a significant technological advancement in the history of engineering and milling operations. Known as the Greek mill or Norse mill, this water-powered device was first documented by the Greek engineer Philo of Byzantium in the 2nd century BCE. The water mill's fundamental design involved a horizontal water wheel, typically mounted on a vertical shaft, which rotated when water from a river or stream struck its blades. This rotational energy was then harnessed to grind grains or perform various industrial tasks. 
The water mill revolutionized grain milling as it offered several advantages over traditional hand-powered grinding methods. It could operate continuously, efficiently producing flour or other milled products with less human labor. This technological leap not only increased productivity but also played a crucial role in the development of complex societies by ensuring a more reliable food supply. The water mill's design became a precursor to later innovations in mechanical engineering and power generation, underscoring the Greeks' contributions to technological progress that continued to shape the modern world. The odometer, a remarkable invention of ancient Greece, represented a significant advancement in measurement and transportation technology. This ingenious device was attributed to the Greek polymath Archimedes in the 3rd century BCE. The odometer was designed to measure distances traveled, making it invaluable for tracking journeys and improving the efficiency of transportation networks. Archimedes' odometer typically consisted of a chariot-like apparatus with a series of gears and rotating cylinders. As the chariot moved forward, these gears engaged with one another, causing the cylinders to turn. A series of pebbles were dropped into compartments on the cylinders, and each pebble represented a specific distance. When the cylinders completed a full rotation, the pebbles would accumulate in a central compartment, allowing travelers to easily count the total distance covered. This ingenious mechanical odometer enabled the Greeks to measure and record distances with a high degree of accuracy, facilitating more precise mapping and navigation of their vast territories. The odometer's impact extended far beyond ancient Greece, as it greatly improved the efficiency of trade, communication, and military operations in the Hellenistic world. Its design principles influenced subsequent developments in mechanics and instrumentation, ultimately contributing to the evolution of modern transportation and measurement technology. Archimedes' odometer exemplifies the Greeks' profound contributions to the field of engineering and their enduring legacy in the world of science and innovation. The ancient Greeks are credited with inventing an early form of an alarm clock known as the Greek klepsidra, or water thief. Developed in the 3rd century BCE, this innovative device was designed to wake people at specific times by using water as a timekeeping mechanism. The Greek klepsidra consisted of a container with a small hole at the bottom that allowed water to slowly drip into another container. A float or marker on the water's surface would rise gradually as the second container filled with water. When it reached a predetermined level, the float triggered a mechanism, such as a whistle or bell, to produce a loud sound, waking the sleeper. The Greek klepsidra was a rudimentary but effective early alarm clock, offering a more reliable way to wake up at specific times than relying solely on natural light or a rooster's crow. While it was a significant step in the development of timekeeping devices, it was primarily used by the affluent and educated classes in ancient Greece and was not widely accessible. Nevertheless, the concept of using water to regulate time and trigger alarms laid the foundation for more sophisticated mechanical and electronic alarm clocks that would emerge in later centuries, shaping the way people wake up to this day. The ancient Greeks made groundbreaking contributions to the field of cartography, which is the science and art of mapmaking. Anaximander, an early Greek philosopher and scientist from the 6th century BCE, is often regarded as one of the first recorded mapmakers in Western history. He created a world map that represented the known world at the time, including the Mediterranean and Black Seas. This map, though primitive by modern standards, was revolutionary in its concept as it introduced the idea of using geometric shapes like circles and rectangles to represent geographic features. Anaximander's map also incorporated the concept of latitude and longitude lines. Another noteworthy Greek cartographer was Ptolemy, who lived in the 2nd century CE but wrote the influential work, Geography, based on earlier Greek and Roman knowledge. Ptolemy's work was significant for its use of a grid system with lines of latitude and longitude, which greatly improved the accuracy of mapmaking. His maps were used for centuries and had a profound impact on medieval European cartography. 
Greek cartography, with its emphasis on precision, scale, and geometric methods, laid the groundwork for the development of more advanced mapping techniques in the centuries that followed, influencing the course of exploration, navigation, and the dissemination of geographical knowledge. The ancient Olympic Games were a pivotal cultural and athletic event in ancient Greece, dating back to at least 776 BC and held every four years in Olympia, a sacred sanctuary dedicated to Zeus. These games were the most prestigious of all Greek athletic competitions and were attended by participants and spectators from various Greek city-states. The Olympics were more than just sporting events. They symbolized the Greek ideals of physical excellence, competition, and the pursuit of honor. The ancient Olympics featured a variety of athletic contests, including foot races, long jump, discus and javelin throwing, wrestling, and the pentathlon, which combined running, jumping, and throwing events. One of the most celebrated aspects of the games was the stadium foot race, a sprint covering a single length of the stadium, which later became the basis for the modern Olympic Games 100-meter dash. These events were not only tests of physical prowess but also opportunities for athletes to demonstrate their dedication to the Greek gods and their city-states. Victors were awarded olive wreaths and became local heroes, with their names inscribed in stone at Olympia. The ancient Olympics promoted peace and diplomacy, as a sacred truce was declared among the city-states during the Games, allowing athletes and spectators to travel safely to and from Olympia, fostering a sense of unity and shared Greek identity. The ancient Olympics are an enduring symbol of the Greek civilization's dedication to athleticism, honor, and the pursuit of excellence, and they laid the foundation for the modern Olympic Games that continue to inspire athletes and nations worldwide. The theater and drama of ancient Greece represent a monumental cultural and artistic achievement that has left an indelible mark on the world of performing arts. The Greeks developed a rich tradition of theatrical productions, with the city of Athens at the forefront of this artistic renaissance. The theater served as a vital component of Greek society and culture, providing a platform for both entertainment and profound exploration of human nature, ethics, and social issues. Greek theater encompassed two main forms, tragedy and comedy. Tragedy, exemplified by the works of playwrights like Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides, dealt into serious and often tragic themes, exploring the human condition, morality, and the consequences of hubris. The iconic Greek tragedies, such as Oedipus Rex and Antigone, continue to be revered for their timeless exploration of complex moral dilemmas. In contrast, Greek comedy, as exemplified by Aristophanes, used humor and satire to comment on politics, society, and everyday life. The theater itself was a marvel of architectural and acoustical engineering, with amphitheaters designed to accommodate large audiences and open-air settings that enhanced the acoustics. Performers wore elaborate masks to signify characters and often relied on a chorus to provide commentary and context. The combination of these elements created a unique and enduring form of artistic expression that laid the foundation for dramatic arts in the Western world, influencing countless playwrights and theater traditions throughout history. Greek mythology, an integral part of ancient Greek culture, is a rich tapestry of gods, heroes, and mythical creatures that provided the Greeks with a framework for understanding the world and human existence. At the heart of Greek mythology are the Olympian gods, a pantheon of powerful deities who resided atop Mount Olympus. Zeus, the king of the gods, ruled over this divine assembly, which included gods and goddesses like Athena, Apollo, Artemis, Hera, and Poseidon, each with their own domains and attributes. These gods often meddled in the affairs of mortals, reflecting human experiences, virtues, and flaws. Greek mythology also featured a cast of legendary heroes like Heracles, Hercules, Achilles, and Odysseus, whose adventures and quests became the stuff of epic poetry and drama. The Trojan War, chronicled in the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer, is one of the most famous episodes in Greek mythology, showcasing the clash between human heroism and divine intervention. Myths explained natural phenomena, established moral codes, and explored the complexities of human emotions and relationships. The stories of Narcissus, Pandora, and Icarus, among many others, remain enduring tales that continue to resonate with modern audiences. 
Greek mythology's enduring legacy is evident in its influence on literature, art, philosophy, and even modern pop culture, making it a timeless and integral part of human storytelling. The politics and society of ancient Greece were characterized by a unique blend of city-states, or polis, each with its own distinct form of government, laws, and societal norms. Greek society was divided into several classes, with citizens enjoying various levels of political participation and rights depending on their status. In Athens, often hailed as the birthplace of democracy, citizens had the opportunity to engage in direct decision-making through the Athenian assembly. However, this form of democracy was limited to a select group of male citizens, excluding women, slaves, and foreigners. In contrast, Sparta, another prominent Greek city-state, adopted a militaristic society with a focus on discipline and communal living, where the government was controlled by a small group of elite citizens known as the Ephors. Greek society placed a significant emphasis on civic participation, education, and the pursuit of excellence in various fields, including politics, philosophy, art, and athletics. Philosophers like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle profoundly influenced political thought and ethics, shaping the development of Western political philosophy. The Greeks also held festivals, such as the Olympics, which fostered a sense of unity and shared identity among the city-states. While Greek society displayed remarkable achievements in governance, culture, and intellectual pursuits, it was not without its complexities, including the exclusion of certain groups from political life and the presence of slavery. Nonetheless, the enduring legacy of Greek political and societal ideals continues to shape contemporary democratic principles and values worldwide. City-states, or polis, were the fundamental political units of the Greek civilization, and they played a central role in shaping the unique character of ancient Greece. Each city-state was an independent entity with its own government, laws, and social customs, and they often varied significantly from one another. Prominent Greek city-states included Athens, Sparta, Corinth, Thebes, and many others, each with its own distinct identity and political system. Athens, considered the birthplace of democracy, was known for its democratic government, where eligible male citizens participated in decision-making through the Athenian assembly. Athens was a center of intellectual and artistic activity, with a strong emphasis on education, philosophy, and the arts. In contrast, Sparta was renowned for its militaristic society, where discipline, training, and military service were paramount. Spartan society was characterized by a strict hierarchy, with a small group of elite citizens known as the Ephors exerting significant control over the state. These city-states often competed and sometimes clashed in military conflicts, including the Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta, which highlighted the tensions and rivalries among the Greek city-states. Despite their differences, city-states were a defining feature of ancient Greek political organization and culture contributing to the rich tapestry of Greek history and civilization. The philosophical legacy of ancient Greece is a cornerstone of Western thought and intellectual tradition. Greek philosophers, including Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, laid the foundation for critical thinking, ethics, metaphysics, and political theory. Socrates' emphasis on questioning and self-examination became the basis for the Socratic method, a powerful tool for stimulating thoughtful discourse and inquiry. Plato's Republic explored the concept of an ideal society and the role of philosopher kings, while Aristotle's extensive works covered topics ranging from ethics and politics to biology and physics. Their philosophical inquiries into the nature of reality, ethics, and governance continue to influence contemporary philosophy and remain essential to the development of ethical and political thought worldwide. The Olympic ideals of ancient Greece have left a lasting legacy that extends far beyond the realm of sports. The ancient Olympics, which originated in Olympia, celebrated not only athletic prowess but also ideals of peace, cooperation, and cultural exchange. A sacred truce was declared during the Games, allowing athletes and spectators to travel safely to and from Olympia, fostering a sense of unity among the Greek city-states. Today, the modern Olympic Games, inspired by their ancient counterparts, embody these ideals of international understanding and peaceful competition.
The Olympic motto, Sidious, Altius, Fortius, Faster, Higher, Stronger, reflects the enduring aspiration for human excellence and sportsmanship that the Greeks first championed. The Olympic flame, lit in Olympia, continues to symbolize the enduring connection between ancient and modern ideals of unity, athleticism, and global cooperation. The epic poems of ancient Greece, the Iliad, and the Odyssey, composed by the legendary poet Homer, stand as towering literary achievements and foundational texts in Western literature. The Iliad narrates the events of the Trojan War, an epic conflict between the Greeks and the Trojans. It revolves around the wrath of Achilles, a Greek hero, and explores themes of heroism, fate, honor, and the consequences of war. The poem's rich characterizations and vivid descriptions of battles and the gods' interference in mortal affairs have captivated readers for millennia, making it a cornerstone of epic storytelling. The Odyssey, Homer's second epic, follows the adventures of Odysseus as he attempts to return home from the Trojan War. This epic is a captivating journey filled with encounters with mythical creatures, gods, and challenges that test Odysseus's wit and courage. The Odyssey explores themes of perseverance, cleverness, loyalty, and the human longing for home. Both epics are not only significant for their literary brilliance but also for their profound influence on subsequent literature and storytelling shaping the narrative traditions of Western culture and inspiring countless adaptations and reinterpretations throughout history. Homer's epic poems continue to be celebrated for their timeless exploration of the human condition and their enduring impact on the world of literature and art. The warfare and professional armies of ancient Greece evolved significantly over time and were shaped by the unique political structures of Greek city-states. In the early Archaic period, Greek warfare relied heavily on citizen soldiers known as hoplites. These hoplites, typically drawn from the ranks of the middle and upper classes, were equipped with a hoplon, a large round shield, a spear, and a Corinthian helmet. They fought in a tightly organized formation called the phalanx, which was characterized by overlapping shields and spears held in unison. The success of the phalanx formation relied on discipline, coordination, and the collective strength of its soldiers. As Greek city-states grew in size and complexity, some began to establish professional armies, often led by generals or military leaders. The most famous example of such a professional army was the Spartan military, renowned for its discipline and prowess. Spartans were rigorously trained from a young age and lived a life dedicated to military service. In contrast, Athens and other city-states also developed paid mercenary forces, known as hired soldiers or hoplites for hire, who fought for wages rather than as citizen soldiers. These developments in the organization and professionalism of Greek armies marked an important shift in ancient warfare and contributed to the complex interplay of politics and military power in the ancient Greek world. The Roman civilization, spanning over a millennium, is one of the most influential and enduring in world history. It emerged in the 8th century BC in the Italian peninsula and eventually expanded into one of the largest and most powerful empires in antiquity. The Romans excelled in governance, engineering, law, military strategy, and cultural achievements, leaving an indelible mark on Western civilization. At the heart of Roman society was its system of governance. Initially a republic, Rome's political structure underwent significant changes, transitioning into an autocratic empire under figures like Julius Caesar and Augustus. The Roman legal system, notably the Corpus Juris Civilis, Justinian's Code, laid the foundation for modern legal principles and remains a cornerstone of jurisprudence. Roman engineering marvels, including aqueducts, roads, and arches, showcase their mastery of construction and infrastructure. The Roman army, one of history's most formidable military forces, conquered vast territories, enabling the spread of Roman culture and administration. The Romans also contributed significantly to literature, philosophy, art, and architecture, with figures like Cicero, Virgil, and the construction of iconic structures like the Colosseum and the Pantheon. Despite the eventual decline of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century C, the Eastern Roman Empire, known as the Byzantine Empire, continued to thrive for nearly a millennium, preserving and transmitting Roman culture and knowledge to future generations. 
The Roman legacy endures in contemporary Western legal, political, architectural, and cultural traditions. The Roman Republic, established around 509 BCE, was a formative period in Roman history characterized by a unique system of government and a commitment to the principles of shared power and civic participation. The Roman Republic emerged in the wake of the overthrow of the monarchy, marking a shift from rule by kings to rule by elected officials. Key to the Republic's governance was the concept of a mixed constitution, blending elements of monarchy, aristocracy, and democracy. The government was composed of various branches, including the Senate, which represented the aristocratic elite, and popular assemblies, where citizens had a voice in decision-making. The Roman Republic was marked by a commitment to the rule of law, as embodied in the Twelve Tables, one of the earliest codifications of Roman law. It also upheld the ideals of civic virtue and the common good, with citizens expected to contribute to the welfare of the state through military service, taxation, and participation in public life. The Republic's military success, well-disciplined legions, and strategic conquests led to the expansion of Roman territory across the Mediterranean, bringing wealth and influence to Rome. However, over time, the Republic faced internal conflicts, class tensions, and power struggles among its political elite, eventually leading to its transformation into the Roman Empire in the 1st century BC under the rule of figures like Julius Caesar and Augustus. Nevertheless, the legacy of the Roman Republic, with its emphasis on constitutional government, legal principles, and civic engagement, remains foundational to modern concepts of governance and the rule of law. The Roman Empire, established in 27 BC when Gaius Octavius, also known as Augustus, became the first Roman emperor, represents one of the most influential and enduring civilizations in history. Spanning more than five centuries, it encompassed vast territories across three continents, including much of Europe, the Mediterranean Basin, North Africa, and parts of the Middle East. The Roman Empire is renowned for its administrative efficiency, engineering marvels, legal innovations, and cultural achievements. Under Augustus and his successors, the Roman Empire experienced a period of relative peace and stability known as the Pax Romana, which fostered economic prosperity and cultural flourishing. The Romans built an extensive network of roads, aqueducts, and infrastructure, including iconic structures like the Colosseum and the Roman Forum. Roman law, codified in the Corpus Juris Civilis, profoundly influenced legal systems worldwide. The empire also made significant contributions to literature, with authors like Virgil, Cicero, and Tacitus, and engineering feats like the construction of the Roman baths and the Pantheon. Despite its ultimate decline and fall in the 5th century C due to factors including external invasions, economic challenges, and internal turmoil, the Roman Empire left a lasting legacy in areas such as governance, architecture, law, and language, continuing to shape contemporary Western civilization. The use of arches is one of the most distinctive architectural features associated with the Roman civilization. Romans perfected the use of the arch, which became a hallmark of their architectural style. The arch's structural integrity allowed Romans to construct grand and enduring buildings, aqueducts, bridges, and monumental gateways that have left a lasting mark on architectural history. One of the most iconic examples is the Colosseum in Rome, a massive amphitheater with a complex system of arches and vaults that accommodated tens of thousands of spectators. Arches were not only essential for supporting the weight of heavy stone structures but also allowed for the creation of expansive, open interior spaces. Roman architects combined arches to create intricate vaulted ceilings, the most famous of which is the Dome of the Pantheon. This remarkable engineering innovation not only showcased Roman technical prowess but also influenced later architectural developments, including the construction of cathedrals and basilicas during the Middle Ages. Roman arches continue to be celebrated for their aesthetic and structural significance, symbolizing the grandeur and enduring legacy of Roman architecture and engineering. Roman civilization is renowned for its urban planning, and one of its enduring legacies is the grid-based city layout. 
The Romans were meticulous city planners, and they often laid out new settlements with a grid pattern of streets, known as a cardo north-south and decuminus east-west, intersecting at right angles. This grid system not only facilitated efficient movement within cities but also provided a framework for organizing public and private spaces. The most famous example of this grid-based design is ancient Rome itself, where the Roman Forum served as the city's central hub. The grid-based layout extended beyond Rome to many Roman colonies and cities throughout the empire. It promoted orderly construction and helped manage urban growth, making it easier to allocate space for public buildings, markets, and residential areas. The Roman grid plan influenced city planning in later civilizations, including the layout of many modern cities. This legacy underscores the Romans' commitment to urban development and their enduring influence on urban design principles that continue to shape cities around the world. The Roman civilization was remarkably advanced in its approach to sewers and sanitation, setting a standard that was unprecedented in the ancient world. In the city of Rome itself, a complex system of sewers, known as cloacae, was designed to efficiently manage wastewater and sewage. The most famous of these is the Cloaca Maxima, a massive sewer that served as the main drainage channel for the city. It was constructed with a carefully engineered design, featuring stone arches and underground channels, to carry sewage and stormwater away from the streets and buildings into the Tiber River. This innovative infrastructure not only improved sanitation but also contributed to public health by reducing the risk of waterborne diseases. Beyond Rome, many Roman cities adopted similar sewer systems, emphasizing the importance of effective sanitation in urban planning. The Romans also introduced public baths, or thermi, which combined recreational facilities with hygiene practices. These baths not only served as social hubs but also encouraged regular bathing and cleanliness. The Romans' pioneering efforts in sewage and sanitation laid the foundation for modern urban planning and hygiene practices, and their legacy can be seen in contemporary sewer systems and public health measures worldwide. The Roman Road Network, one of the most remarkable engineering achievements of the Roman civilization, facilitated the efficient movement of people, goods, and armies throughout the vast Roman Empire. These roads, collectively known as Vai, were a crucial component of Roman infrastructure, contributing to the empire's unity and economic prosperity. Roman roads were meticulously designed and constructed, featuring a well-planned grid system and using durable materials like stone, gravel, and concrete. They often had multiple layers, including a solid foundation and carefully cambered surfaces to ensure proper drainage. The Roman road network was extensive, with some estimates suggesting that there were over 400,000 kilometers, about 250,000 miles, of roads across the empire. These roads connected major cities, military outposts, and provinces, allowing for efficient transportation and communication. The famous Roman road, the Appian Way, via Appia, is a prime example of this engineering marvel. It connected Rome to the southern regions of Italy and played a vital role in the Roman expansion. The efficiency of the Roman road system contributed significantly to the mobility of the Roman legions, enabling rapid response to military threats and the spread of Roman culture and governance. Many Roman roads still exist today, and their enduring legacy can be seen in modern road construction and infrastructure planning. The Roman aqueducts are a testament to the advanced engineering prowess of the Roman civilization. These remarkable structures were designed to transport fresh water over long distances, ensuring a reliable supply of water for drinking, bathing, and various public and private uses in Roman cities. The aqueducts were an essential component of Roman urban planning, contributing to the health, hygiene, and growth of their cities. Roman aqueducts were ingeniously engineered with a combination of arches, channels, tunnels, and gradients. The aqueducts would start in areas with a water source, often in hilly or mountainous regions, and then use gravity to transport the water to the city. The water would flow through channels or pipes made of materials such as concrete, lead, or ceramic. To overcome natural obstacles like valleys, engineers designed arched bridges and viaducts that carried the aqueducts above the terrain. 
The most famous example is the Pont du Gard in France, a well-preserved Roman aqueduct bridge. These engineering marvels could span dozens of kilometers and supply water to densely populated urban centers. The Roman aqueducts exemplify the Romans' mastery of hydraulic engineering and their commitment to improving the quality of urban life, leaving a lasting legacy in the history of infrastructure and urban planning. Surgery in the Roman civilization was a significant medical practice, and Roman surgeons developed a range of tools and techniques that laid the foundation for later advancements in the field. Surgical instruments used during Roman times included scalpels, forceps, and probes, many of which were made from durable materials like bronze and iron. Roman surgeons also employed a variety of hooks, clamps, and cautery devices for specific procedures. The design and craftsmanship of these instruments reflected the Romans' understanding of anatomy and their commitment to surgical precision. One notable Roman surgical technique was the practice of trepanation, which involved drilling holes into the skull. While this procedure might seem crude by modern standards, it was employed to treat head injuries, relieve pressure on the brain, or address certain neurological conditions. Roman surgeons also performed procedures such as amputations, hernia repairs, and wound suturing. Their surgical knowledge was passed down through written texts like those of the Roman physician Galen, who expanded upon the works of earlier medical thinkers. While Roman surgery may not have had the sophistication of modern surgical practices, it represented a significant step forward in the history of medicine, emphasizing the importance of systematic observation, documentation, and the development of surgical instruments and techniques. The Julian calendar, introduced by Julius Caesar in 45 BCE, was a major reform of the Roman calendar system. It replaced the previous Roman calendar, which had become out of sync with the solar year due to inaccuracies in its measurement of time. The Julian calendar sought to rectify these errors by instituting a 365-day year, with an additional day added every four years to account for the extra fraction of a day in the solar year. This leap year system, known as the Julian leap year, effectively aligned the calendar year with the solar year, bringing greater accuracy to timekeeping. The Julian calendar was an essential development in the Roman world, as it provided a more stable and reliable means of organizing civil and religious events. It served as the basis for the modern Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar system most of the world uses today. While the Julian calendar improved the accuracy of timekeeping, it still had a slight discrepancy with the actual solar year, leading to the need for further reforms. In the 16th century, Pope Gregory XIII introduced the Gregorian calendar to address these discrepancies and bring the calendar year even closer in line with the solar year, leading to the calendar system in use today in most parts of the world. The Roman civilization did not have newspapers in the modern sense, as we understand them today. However, they did have a form of public information dissemination through handwritten bulletins known as Acta Diurna, or Daily Acts. These daily announcements were posted in prominent public spaces like the Roman Forum and were used to convey news, government decrees, legal proceedings, and other important information to the public. The Acta Diurna were inscribed on stone or metal tablets and were one of the earliest forms of public record-keeping and information-sharing in the ancient world. While the Acta Diurna provided valuable information to the Roman populace, they were quite different from modern newspapers in terms of content, format, and distribution. They were primarily official government documents rather than independent sources of news reporting. The concept of newspapers as we know them today, with editorial content, independent journalism, and a commercial model, did not emerge until many centuries later, during the Renaissance and the early modern period in Europe. Nonetheless, the Acta Diurna represent an early attempt at public information dissemination and played a role in conveying important news and events to the Roman people. The concrete of the Roman civilization is one of its most enduring and influential technological achievements. Roman concrete, or opus cementitium, revolutionized construction by providing a versatile and durable building material. It was composed of a mixture of volcanic ash, lime, and small stones or aggregate. What set Roman concrete apart was the use of a unique binding agent called pozzolana, 
a volcanic ash found in abundance in the region around Rome. When mixed with water, pozzolana created a chemical reaction that produced a strong, cohesive material. Roman concrete was used in various architectural marvels, including aqueducts, bridges, roads, and monumental structures like the Pantheon and the Colosseum. Its exceptional strength and longevity allowed these structures to withstand the test of time, with many of them still standing today, over 2,000 years later. The Romans' mastery of concrete technology had a profound impact on the development of architecture and engineering, influencing subsequent generations of builders and contributing to the construction of more enduring and ambitious structures throughout history. Roman concrete remains a testament to the ingenuity and engineering prowess of the Roman civilization and continues to inspire modern construction techniques and materials. Roman law, one of the most enduring contributions of the Roman civilization, served as the foundation for modern legal systems around the world. The Romans placed a strong emphasis on the rule of law and codified their legal principles into a comprehensive system. One of the most significant legal codes was the Corpus Juris Civilis, or the Body of Civil Law, commissioned by Emperor Justinian I in the 6th century CE. This monumental work compiled and organized centuries of Roman legal thought, including the works of prominent jurists like Gaius and Ulpian. It consisted of four parts, the Institutes, an introduction to legal concepts, the Digest, a compilation of legal opinions, the Codex, a collection of imperial laws, and the Novelli, additional legislation issued by Justinian. Roman law was characterized by its clarity, consistency, and adaptability. It encompassed a wide range of legal subjects, including contracts, property, family law, and criminal law. Roman legal principles, such as the idea that all citizens had the right to equal treatment under the law and that legal decisions should be based on precedent, have profoundly influenced the development of modern legal systems. Concepts like innocent until proven guilty and the distinction between public and private law can trace their roots back to Roman jurisprudence. The enduring legacy of Roman law underscores its enduring importance as a cornerstone of the Western legal tradition and its influence on the principles of justice and governance that continue to shape societies today. The Roman civilization left an indelible mark on the world through its engineering marvels, which stand as a testament to the Romans' ingenuity, technical skill, and ambitious spirit. One of the most iconic examples is the Colosseum, a massive amphitheater in Rome that could hold up to 80,000 spectators. Built in the 1st century CE, it featured a complex system of arches and vaults, advanced construction techniques, and movable elements that allowed for elaborate stage productions and gladiatorial contests. The Colosseum exemplifies Roman expertise in architecture and engineering and remains an enduring symbol of Roman engineering prowess. Another remarkable engineering achievement was the construction of aqueducts, such as the Pont du Gard in France and the Aqua Claudia in Rome. These massive structures transported fresh water over long distances using gravity, enabling reliable water supply to cities, public baths, and fountains. Roman aqueducts featured meticulous planning, precise gradients, and arches to navigate challenging terrains. These engineering feats not only improved sanitation and public health but also demonstrated the Romans' ability to harness complex hydraulic systems. Roman roads, an extensive network of well-constructed highways, also played a crucial role in the empire's growth and governance. They featured durable materials, carefully engineered gradients, and straight alignments, facilitating efficient movement of people, goods, and armies across the vast Roman territories. The legacy of Roman engineering endures in modern infrastructure and continues to inspire engineers and architects worldwide. Roman literature represents a rich and diverse body of work that spanned many centuries and encompassed a wide range of genres and themes. The Romans were heavily influenced by Greek literature, but they developed their own distinctive literary traditions. One of the most famous Roman poets is Virgil, whose epic poem, the Aeneid, is considered a foundational work of Latin literature. It tells the story of Aeneas, a Trojan hero, and his journey to Italy, serving as an epic origin myth for Rome itself. Virgil's writing combined deep patriotism with themes of destiny, honor, and the cost of war. 
Another prominent Roman poet was Ovid, known for his witty and often provocative works, including the Metamorphoses and the Ars Amatoria, the Art of Love. The Metamorphoses is a narrative poem that weaves together countless myths and legends, exploring themes of transformation and the human condition. Ovid's poetry was both celebrated and controversial, and his works had a significant influence on later literature and art. Additionally, Cicero, a prominent Roman statesman and orator, made significant contributions to Roman literature through his philosophical writings, letters, and speeches. His works, including De Officius, On Duties, and In Catilinum, Against Catalan, continue to be studied for their insights into ethics and politics. Roman literature reflects the cultural, social, and political values of the Roman civilization and remains an invaluable source for understanding its history and intellectual legacy. The Roman baths, or thermi, were a prominent feature of Roman society and culture, serving not only as places for bathing but also as important social hubs and centers for relaxation, exercise, and socializing. Roman baths were characterized by their grandeur and sophistication, often featuring expansive buildings with multiple rooms, heated pools, and intricate architectural details. The most famous Roman baths include the Baths of Caracalla and the Baths of Diocletian in Rome. These baths were more than just places to cleanse the body, they were spaces for recreation and social interaction. Visitors could enjoy a range of activities, including swimming, exercise, massages, and even intellectual discussions. Roman baths were often lavishly decorated with mosaics, frescoes, and sculptures, creating an opulent atmosphere that showcased the Romans' appreciation for art and aesthetics. The baths played a crucial role in promoting hygiene and public health, and they remained integral to Roman culture for centuries, enduring as a symbol of the civilization's advanced engineering and urban planning. The legacy of Roman baths can still be seen in contemporary spa culture and the enduring value placed on relaxation and communal bathing in various parts of the world. Roman mythology, deeply rooted in the religious beliefs and cultural traditions of ancient Rome, was a complex and multifaceted system of gods, goddesses, heroes, and mythical narratives. Many aspects of Roman mythology were heavily influenced by Greek mythology, with Roman deities often corresponding to their Greek counterparts. The chief among Roman gods was Jupiter, equivalent to the Greek god Zeus, who ruled the heavens and was associated with thunder and lightning. Juno, Jupiter's wife, was the queen of the gods, parallel to Hera in Greek mythology. Other major Roman deities included Neptune, Poseidon, Mars, Ares, Venus, Aphrodite, and Mercury, Hermes, each presiding over various domains of life and nature. Roman mythology also included a rich array of legendary heroes and founding myths. The myth of Aeneas, for example, traced the origins of Rome to the Trojan War and Aeneas's journey to Italy as told in Virgil's epic poem, The Aeneid. The Romans also had a strong belief in ancestral spirits, with household gods and spirits, such as the Laras and Penates, playing a vital role in daily life. Roman mythology was interwoven with religious rituals, festivals, and sacrifices, reflecting the Romans' deep connection to the divine and their efforts to secure the favor of the gods for the well-being of the state and its citizens. While the Roman Empire eventually adopted Christianity as its official religion, Roman mythology continues to influence art, literature, and culture to this day, serving as a bridge between the ancient world and the cultural heritage of Western civilization. The gladiatorial games, or munera, were a form of public spectacle and entertainment that became synonymous with the Roman civilization. These brutal contests involved trained combatants, known as gladiators, engaging in deadly combat within arenas called amphitheaters. The most famous of these arenas is the Colosseum in Rome. Gladiatorial games had multiple purposes, including providing entertainment to the masses, showcasing the martial prowess of combatants, and serving as a means for emperors and elite sponsors to gain popularity and demonstrate their power. Gladiators came from diverse backgrounds and were often slaves, prisoners of war, or volunteers seeking fame and fortune. They were trained in various combat styles, including sword fighting, weaponry, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Matches typically ended with one combatant's death or surrender, 
and the outcome was determined by the will of the crowd or the emperor. The spectacle was accompanied by elaborate ceremonies, music, and rituals, making it a highly theatrical event. While gladiatorial games were undeniably brutal and lethal, they held a complex place in Roman society, reflecting the values of courage, endurance, and martial skill while also serving as a means of social control and political propaganda. The legacy of the gladiatorial games endures in popular culture and continues to be studied for its insights into Roman society and entertainment. The spread of Christianity within the Roman civilization was a transformative and complex process that profoundly influenced the course of Western history. Christianity emerged in the Roman province of Judea in the first century CE and gradually gained adherents, drawing from both Jewish and non-Jewish communities. Early Christians faced periods of persecution by Roman authorities, but the religion continued to grow, fueled by its message of salvation and the appeal of its moral and spiritual teachings. One pivotal moment in the spread of Christianity was the conversion of Emperor Constantine the Great in the early 4th century CE. Constantine's Edict of Milan in 313 CE granted religious tolerance to Christians, effectively ending their persecution. This marked a turning point for the faith, as it was no longer considered illegal, and it gradually gained official recognition and support. Constantine himself played a significant role in convening the First Council of Nicaea in 325 CE, which sought to address theological disputes within the Christian community and establish a unified doctrine. By the end of the 4th century, under Emperor Theodosius I, Christianity became the state religion of the Roman Empire, solidifying its position as a dominant and enduring force in the Western world. The spread of Christianity from the margins of Roman society to its center had profound implications for the Roman Empire's cultural, religious, and political landscape, and it played a crucial role in the transition from the Roman to the Byzantine and medieval Christian civilizations. The ancient Indian civilization, one of the world's oldest and most complex civilizations, thrived in the Indian subcontinent for thousands of years. It encompassed a vast and diverse territory, marked by a rich tapestry of cultures, languages, and traditions. Ancient India is renowned for its remarkable contributions to philosophy, religion, mathematics, science, and the arts. One of the most prominent features of ancient Indian civilization was its profound spiritual and philosophical heritage. It gave birth to major religions such as Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, which continue to shape the beliefs and practices of millions of people today. Ancient Indian philosophers and scholars produced foundational texts like the Vedas, Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, and the teachings of Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha. These texts explored profound questions about the nature of reality, the self, and the path to enlightenment. Additionally, ancient India made significant advances in mathematics, exemplified by the invention of the decimal numeral system and the concept of zero, both of which are foundational to modern mathematics. In the field of science, Indian astronomers made important contributions to understanding the cosmos, including the calculation of the Earth's circumference and the concept of heliocentrism which predated similar ideas in the West by centuries. The ancient Indian civilization was also known for its rich literary traditions, with classical epics like the Mahabharata and Ramayana and treatises on subjects ranging from medicine to economics. The Maurya and Gupta empires are two notable periods in ancient Indian history that witnessed political consolidation, economic prosperity, and the flourishing of arts and sciences. The monumental rock-cut architecture of Emperor Ashoka and the development of the concept of dharma, or moral duty, are among the cultural and philosophical legacies of this era. Ancient India's cultural and intellectual contributions continue to resonate globally, and its legacy endures in contemporary India and beyond. It remains a source of fascination for scholars and enthusiasts alike, offering valuable insights into the complexity and enduring significance of human civilization. The Vedic period, which spanned from around 1500 BC to 600 BC, marks one of the earliest phases of the ancient Indian civilization. Named after the sacred texts known as the Vedas, this era was characterized by the arrival of Indo-Aryan tribes into the Indian subcontinent, bringing with them a new language, religious beliefs, and social structures. The Vedic texts, 
which include the Rigveda, Samaveda, Yajurveda, and Atharvaveda, are some of the oldest religious and philosophical texts in the world. They comprise hymns, prayers, rituals, and philosophical discussions that reflect the spiritual and cultural landscape of the time. During the Vedic period, society was organized into a series of tribes or clans known as jana or tribes. These tribes were led by chieftains or kings, and their religious and social life was centered around rituals and ceremonies conducted by priests known as Brahmins. The Vedic religion revolved around deities like Indra, the god of thunder and rain, Agni, the god of fire, Varana, the god of order and cosmic law, and many others. Ritual sacrifices, called yajnas, played a central role in worship, and they were believed to maintain cosmic order and harmony. The Vedic period laid the foundation for many aspects of later Indian civilization, including the development of Hinduism and the caste system, which categorized society into distinct social groups based on occupation and birth. It also contributed to the rich tapestry of Indian philosophy and spirituality, setting the stage for the evolution of religious thought and practices in subsequent eras. The Maurya Empire, which existed from approximately 322 BC to 185 BC, was one of the most significant and influential empires in the history of the ancient Indian civilization. Founded by Chandragupta Maurya, who overthrew the Nanda dynasty, the Maurya Empire marked a period of centralized rule and political unity across much of the Indian subcontinent. Its capital, Pataliputra, modern-day Patna, became a thriving center of trade, culture, and administration. Under the leadership of Chandragupta and his successors, notably Ashoka the Great, the Maurya Empire expanded its boundaries, encompassing a vast territory that stretched from modern-day Afghanistan in the west to Bengal in the east and down into the Deccan Plateau in the south. Ashoka, the most famous Mauryan ruler, played a pivotal role in shaping the empire's character. His conversion to Buddhism and his commitment to nonviolence and religious tolerance are well documented in his edicts and inscriptions carved on pillars and rocks throughout the empire. Ashoka's reign saw the spread of Buddhism not only within India but also to other parts of Asia, making him a symbol of India's cultural and philosophical influence on the region. The Maurya Empire's legacy includes its administrative innovations, such as a well-organized bureaucracy, a sophisticated system of taxation, and the establishment of a network of roads and rest houses for travelers. Despite its eventual decline, the Maurya Empire left an enduring impact on the political, cultural, and religious landscape of ancient India and set the stage for subsequent dynasties and empires in the subcontinent. The Persian civilization, also known as the Achaemenid Empire, was a powerful and influential civilization that emerged in the ancient Near East in the 6th century BCE. Founded by Cyrus the Great, the empire stretched across a vast territory, encompassing parts of modern-day Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Egypt, and beyond. One of its most significant contributions to history was its model of governance, characterized by a decentralized administrative system that allowed for a degree of cultural and religious autonomy among its diverse subjects. This approach to governance, known as the Cyrus Cylinder, is often regarded as an early example of human rights and religious tolerance, emphasizing the importance of respecting the traditions and beliefs of different peoples within the empire. The Achaemenid Empire is also renowned for its impressive architectural achievements. The city of Persepolis, founded by Darius the Great, served as the ceremonial capital and a symbol of the empire's grandeur. Persepolis featured monumental structures, palaces, and intricate reliefs, showcasing the empire's artistic and engineering prowess. The Persians also played a crucial role in the transmission of knowledge and culture between the East and West facilitating exchanges along the Silk Road and contributing to the spread of ideas, technologies, and traditions. Despite its eventual conquest by Alexander the Great and the rise of other empires in the region, the Persian civilization left an indelible mark on the course of history, particularly in the realms of governance, culture, and diplomacy. The administrative system of the Persian civilization, particularly under the Achaemenid Empire, was characterized by a well-structured and efficient bureaucracy that played a vital role in governing a vast and diverse empire. At the heart of the administrative system was the king, who held supreme authority and was regarded as the divine ruler. 
The king's power was balanced by a council of advisors, often referred to as the king's eyes and ears, who helped him make important decisions. This system of governance allowed for centralized authority while also incorporating elements of consultation and advice. One of the most notable features of the Persian administrative system was its division into provinces, or satrapies, each governed by a satrap appointed by the king. Satraps were responsible for collecting taxes, maintaining law and order, and ensuring the loyalty of their region to the empire. The satrapies were further subdivided into districts, and local officials helped oversee day-to-day -day administration. The Persian Empire also developed a sophisticated system of communication and record-keeping, which included the use of royal couriers, known as the Royal Road, to relay messages and information across the vast empire. Additionally, the empire's administrative language was Aramaic, which facilitated communication and record-keeping among different regions. This well-organized administrative structure contributed to the stability and longevity of the Achaemenid Empire and became a model for subsequent empires in the region. The Royal Road of the Persian Civilization, also known as the Royal Highway, was an ancient network of interconnected routes that played a crucial role in facilitating communication, trade, and governance within the vast Achaemenid Empire. Constructed during the reign of King Darius I in the 5th century BC, the Royal Road stretched approximately 1,600 miles 2, kilometers, from the capital city of Susa in the southwest of modern-day Iran to Sardis in western Anatolia, modern-day Turkey. This extraordinary engineering feat allowed for swift and efficient travel across the diverse landscapes of the empire, including deserts, mountains, and plains. The Royal Road featured strategically placed way stations, known as caravanserais, where travelers and couriers could rest, access fresh horses, and find supplies. This system of relays and provisions enabled messages to be relayed at an impressive speed, making it possible to traverse the entire length of the empire in a relatively short time. The Royal Road was instrumental in maintaining the cohesion of the Achaemenid Empire, as it allowed for rapid communication between the capital and distant provinces, ensuring the timely dissemination of orders and information. It also facilitated the movement of goods and fostered trade between regions, contributing to the empire's economic prosperity. The legacy of the Royal Road can be seen in the historical development of road networks and communication systems which continue to play a pivotal role in modern transportation and infrastructure. The Persian civilization, particularly under the Achaemenid Empire, boasted a sophisticated imperial bureaucracy that played a pivotal role in governing and administering its vast and diverse territories. At the pinnacle of the bureaucracy was the king, who wielded supreme authority and was considered divine. However, the empire was too extensive to be ruled directly from the center so a system of decentralized governance was implemented. The empire was divided into provinces or satrapies, each overseen by a satrap, appointed by the king. These satraps were responsible for managing their respective regions, including collecting taxes, maintaining order, and upholding imperial loyalty. Beneath the satraps were local officials, such as judges and tax collectors, who ensured the administration of justice and revenue collection at the district and local levels. The imperial bureaucracy also extended to the military, with commanders responsible for the defense of the empire's frontiers. Communication throughout the empire was facilitated by a network of roads, including the famous Royal Road, and the use of Aramaic as a common administrative language. This well-organized and hierarchical bureaucracy enabled the Achaemenid Empire to efficiently govern its expansive territories, maintain control, and collect revenue. While it was a centralized system in many respects, it allowed for a degree of regional autonomy and contributed to the empire's stability during its heyday. The Persian civilization, under the Achaemenid Empire, established an impressive postal service that played a pivotal role in facilitating communication, administration, and the efficient governance of its vast territories. At the heart of this system was the Royal Road, an extensive network of interconnected routes spanning approximately 1,600 miles 2, kilometers, from Susa in southwestern Iran to Sardis in western Anatolia, modern-day Turkey. 
The Royal Road featured strategically placed way stations, known as caravanserais, where couriers and travelers could rest, obtain fresh horses, and access provisions. This relay system allowed for the rapid transmission of messages, orders, and official correspondence across the empire. The Postal Service employed a well-organized corps of couriers known as Angarayan, who were tasked with carrying important messages and documents over long distances. The speed and efficiency of the postal system were legendary, with messages being delivered in a matter of days, a remarkable feat for the ancient world. This network facilitated the swift dissemination of imperial decrees, administrative instructions, and military orders, ensuring the timely execution of policies and maintaining the cohesion of the Achaemenid Empire. The Persian Postal Service's legacy can be seen as an early precursor to modern postal systems, emphasizing the importance of reliable and efficient communication in the administration of a vast and diverse empire. Persepolis, also known as Taktijamshid, was one of the most magnificent and iconic cities of the Persian civilization, built during the reign of Darius the Great in the 6th century BCE. Situated in modern-day Iran, Persepolis served as the ceremonial capital of the Achaemenid Empire and was a testament to the empire's grandeur and architectural prowess. The city was strategically located at the foot of the Zagros Mountains and was easily accessible via the Royal Road, a network of well-maintained highways. Persepolis was designed to impress visitors and foreign dignitaries and to serve as a symbol of the empire's wealth and power. The city's architectural highlights included the Grand Apadana Palace, a massive audience hall where the king received guests and conducted official ceremonies. The palace featured intricate reliefs, colossal statues, and grand staircases, showcasing the empire's artistry and craftsmanship. Persepolis also housed numerous other palaces, audience halls, and administrative buildings, all adorned with beautifully carved stone reliefs depicting scenes from royal life, mythology, and imperial conquests. The city's architectural marvels, combined with its role as a center for governance and diplomacy, make Persepolis an enduring symbol of the Achaemenid Empire's cultural and political achievements. Despite its eventual destruction by Alexander the Great in 330 BC, the ruins of Persepolis continued to captivate visitors and scholars alike, offering insights into the splendor and sophistication of the Persian civilization. The Kanit system, also known as Karais or Keras in some regions, was a remarkable and innovative underground irrigation system developed and perfected by the Persian civilization. Dating back over a thousand years, this sophisticated system was designed to tap into underground water sources, such as aquifers, and transport the water to the surface for agricultural and domestic use. It was particularly vital in arid and semi-arid regions of Persia, modern-day Iran, and other parts of the Middle East, where water scarcity was a significant challenge. The Kanit system consisted of a series of underground tunnels, often dug horizontally or at a slight incline to follow the natural contours of the land. These tunnels tapped into underground water sources, channeling water through gravity to a central well or distribution point, where it could then be accessed by communities for irrigation and other needs. The system's underground design protected the water from evaporation and contamination, making it a highly efficient and sustainable means of water management. The Kanit system played a crucial role in supporting agriculture, allowing communities to cultivate crops in regions where water resources were otherwise limited. It also helped mitigate the effects of drought and contributed to the flourishing of Persian agriculture and civilization. Today, some ancient Kanits are still in use, exemplifying the enduring legacy and ingenuity of this remarkable water management system. The Yakchul, an ingenious architectural invention of the Persian civilization, was a type of ancient refrigeration system designed to store ice and preserve perishable food and beverages in the scorching desert climates of Persia, modern-day Iran. Dating back over a thousand years, these structures were not only marvels of engineering but also crucial for sustaining communities in arid regions. Yakchuls were typically cylindrical or conical structures made of a special heat-resistant mud brick called kesht which was mixed with other materials like sand and clay. The key to the Yakchul's effectiveness was its unique cooling mechanism. The structure featured a subterranean chamber with a deep vertical shaft that extended above ground, topped with a dome. 
During the winter months, ice and snow were collected and stored in the subterranean chamber. As the temperatures rose during the hot summer, the Yokchul's thick walls and heat-resistant dome prevented heat from entering the storage area. At the same time, the tall above-ground shaft and the shape of the dome allowed hot air inside the chamber to rise and escape, creating a natural airflow that further cooled the interior. This combination of insulation and ventilation maintained temperatures low enough for the stored ice to remain frozen throughout the summer, providing a reliable source of ice and refrigeration in an otherwise harsh climate. The Yakchul's ingenious design exemplified the Persian civilization's resourcefulness and mastery of environmental engineering, allowing communities to enjoy cool refreshments and preserve food in an era long before the advent of modern refrigeration. The Persian civilization, particularly during the Achaemenid Empire under rulers like Cyrus the Great and Darius the Great, was known for its remarkable degree of religious and cultural tolerance, setting a precedent for a cosmopolitan and diverse empire. Cyrus the Great, in particular, is celebrated for his famous decree known as the Cyrus Cylinder, which promoted religious freedom and the return of displaced peoples to their homelands. This policy of tolerance extended to the empire's subjects, regardless of their ethnic or religious background, and it encouraged a sense of inclusivity and acceptance within the Achaemenid Empire. Cultural exchange also thrived within the Persian Empire. The empire's vast territorial expanse encompassed numerous diverse cultures, languages, and traditions. The Achaemenid rulers, recognizing the value of a unified empire, actively promoted the exchange of ideas, art, and technologies across regions. This facilitated the blending of various cultural elements and the emergence of a unique synthesis that drew from the rich tapestry of Persian, Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Greek, and other cultural influences. The Royal Road, the empire's network of interconnected highways, played a pivotal role in this cultural exchange, enabling swift communication and the movement of people and goods across vast distances. As a result, the Achaemenid Empire was characterized by a cosmopolitan ethos that celebrated diversity and promoted a sense of unity among its subjects, setting a precedent for future empires and civilizations. Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest known religions, was founded in ancient Persia during the 6th century BCE by the prophet Zoroaster, or Zarathustra. It became the dominant religion of the Persian civilization and played a significant role in shaping the culture, values, and worldview of the empire. At its core, Zoroastrianism is a monotheistic faith centered around the worship of Ahura Mazda, the supreme god who embodies truth, wisdom, and goodness. Zoroastrians believe in the eternal struggle between good and evil, with Ahura Mazda representing the force of good and Engramanu, Araman, symbolizing evil. Zoroastrianism introduced several key religious concepts that influenced not only Persian culture but also the development of other major world religions. These include the belief in individual moral responsibility, the idea of a final judgment, and the concept of an afterlife where one's actions in life are weighed to determine their fate. Zoroastrianism also emphasized the importance of ethical behavior, including truthfulness, charity, and respect for nature. Fire, as a symbol of purity and divine presence, held a central place in Zoroastrian worship, with fire temples being places of religious observance. Although Zoroastrianism declined in prominence following the spread of Islam in Persia, it has left a lasting cultural legacy, and today, it remains an important religion for its adherents, with significant Zoroastrian communities in India and other parts of the world. One of the most notable legal achievements was the compilation and codification of laws under King Darius the Great. These laws were inscribed on large stone tablets in various locations within the empire, including the famous Behistun inscription. The codification of laws served to provide a clear and consistent legal framework that governed the empire's diverse subjects and regions. These laws were known for their fairness and impartiality, reflecting a commitment to justice and order. They covered a wide range of matters, including property rights, taxation, and criminal offenses, and they helped maintain social cohesion and facilitate commerce and trade. Additionally, the Achaemenid legal system emphasized the king's role as the protector of justice and his duty to ensure the welfare of his subjects. 
This codification of laws and the principles of justice it embodied laid the foundation for subsequent legal systems and influenced the development of legal thought in the ancient world. The Persian approach to codifying laws demonstrated a commitment to rule of law and contributed to the stability and longevity of the Achaemenid Empire. Persian art and craftsmanship during the Persian civilization, particularly under the Achaemenid Empire and later dynasties like the Sassanids, exhibited a remarkable blend of artistic traditions, innovation, and cultural influences. Persian artisans were known for their expertise in various fields, including architecture, ceramics, metalwork, textiles, and miniature painting. In architecture, Persian craftsmen created awe-inspiring structures characterized by grandeur and sophistication. The city of Persepolis, with its magnificent palaces adorned with intricately carved stone reliefs, stands as a testament to Persian architectural achievements. These reliefs depicted scenes of royal life, mythological stories, and cultural interactions, providing invaluable insights into the aesthetics and narrative traditions of the time. Persian carpets, renowned for their intricate designs and rich colors, remain celebrated examples of Persian craftsmanship. The art of miniature painting also flourished, particularly during the Islamic era, with illuminated manuscripts like the Shahnameh, Book of Kings, showcasing the fusion of Persian and Islamic artistic traditions. Persian art and craftsmanship were known for their attention to detail, artistic expression, and their contribution to the broader tapestry of world art and culture. Persian literature, renowned for its richness and depth, has a long and illustrious history that dates back over a millennium. One of the most significant contributions to Persian literature is the epic poem Shahnameh, written by the Persian poet Ferdowsi in the 10th century. This epic is a masterpiece of Persian literature, narrating the history of Iran from mythical origins to the Islamic conquests. It is celebrated for its vivid storytelling, complex characters, and moral themes, embodying the essence of Persian culture and identity. Persian literature also gave birth to a profound tradition of Sufi poetry, with poets like Rumi and Hafez gaining international recognition for their spiritual verses. Rumi's Mathnawi and Hafez's Ghazals are esteemed for their profound philosophical insights, mystical exploration, and lyrical beauty. The Persian literary tradition extended into various other genres, including philosophical treatises, historical chronicles, and scientific writings. Avicenna's Canon of Medicine and Omar Khayyam's Rubaiyat are notable examples of Persian contributions to philosophy and mathematics. Persian literature, with its deep spiritual and intellectual themes, continues to inspire writers, scholars, and readers worldwide, leaving an indelible mark on world literature and culture. Sulfuric acid, also known as oil of vitriol, was an important chemical substance known and produced by Persian alchemists during the Islamic Golden Age, which extended from the 8th to the 13th centuries. The process of creating sulfuric acid involved the distillation of various substances, including sulfur, water, and vitriol, a naturally occurring sulfide mineral. Persian alchemists are credited with developing early methods for synthesizing sulfuric acid through the distillation of these materials. Sulfuric acid had several applications in Persian alchemy and chemistry, including the preparation of medicinal compounds and dyes. It was also used in various experiments and processes aimed at understanding the properties of different substances and their reactions. The Persian contributions to the study and production of sulfuric acid represented a significant advancement in the field of chemistry during the Islamic Golden Age, paving the way for further exploration of chemical processes and reactions in the centuries that followed. The Persian civilization has a rich history of artistic expression, and while animation in the contemporary sense didn't exist in ancient Persia, the civilization did have a profound tradition of visual storytelling through various art forms. Persian miniature painting, for example, was a highly developed artistic medium that often featured intricate, detailed depictions of scenes from literature, history, and daily life. These vivid and finely detailed illustrations served as a form of visual narrative, capturing moments of storytelling and providing a glimpse into the cultural and historical contexts of the time. 
The Persian tradition of storytelling and visual art also extended to the creation of beautiful manuscripts, including those containing the works of renowned poets like Rumi and Hafez. These manuscripts featured carefully designed calligraphy and often included marginalia and embellishments that added visual elements to the text. While animation as we know it today didn't exist in ancient Persia, the civilization's artistic and narrative traditions contributed to a rich visual heritage that continues to inspire contemporary artists and storytellers, including those working in the medium of animation. The Persian Immortals, also known as the 10,000 Immortals, or Persian Warriors, were a prestigious and elite military unit within the Persian civilization, particularly during the Achaemenid Empire which thrived from the 6th to the 4th centuries BCE. These elite soldiers were handpicked for their exceptional skills, loyalty, and dedication to the Persian kings, and their name Immortals comes from the belief that their numbers were always maintained at 10,000. When one member fell in battle or became incapacitated, they were immediately replaced to keep the unit at full strength. The Persian Immortals were known for their distinctive attire, which included robes adorned with various colors and ornaments. They wielded a variety of weapons, including spears, swords, and bows, and were renowned for their discipline and combat proficiency. The immortals played a vital role in protecting the Persian king, serving as both his personal bodyguards and an elite strike force during military campaigns. Their prowess in battle was legendary, and their loyalty to the king was unwavering. The Immortals were a symbol of the Achaemenid Empire's military strength and the authority of its monarchs, and they contributed significantly to the Empire's success and stability during its peak. Persian gardens, known for their beauty, symmetry, and meticulous design, have a rich history dating back thousands of years within the Persian civilization. These gardens, often referred to as paradise gardens, played a significant role in Persian culture and aesthetics, influencing garden design in other parts of the world, including Islamic gardens in Spain and India. Persian gardens typically feature several key elements, including a central water feature such as a reflecting pool or fountain, surrounded by carefully arranged flower beds, trees, and pathways. The gardens are often enclosed by high walls to create a sense of privacy and seclusion. The concept of chaharbag, meaning for gardens, is fundamental in Persian garden design, representing the division of the garden into quadrants by water channels. These gardens also incorporate symbolism, with elements representing the four Zoroastrian elements, water, fire, earth, and air. The use of flowing water, often channeled through a complex system of underground canets, aqueducts, provided not only visual beauty but also a practical function for irrigation in the arid Persian landscape. Persian gardens became renowned for their tranquility, beauty, and their ability to create a sense of harmony between humanity and nature, emphasizing the connection between the physical and spiritual realms. Pasargadi was an ancient city and capital of the Achaemenid Empire, founded by Cyrus the Great in the 6th century BCE. It is located in modern-day Iran and is known for its historical and architectural significance. Pasargadi's layout and structures reflect the ingenuity and cultural ideals of the Persian civilization. One of the most iconic features of Pasargadi is the tomb of Cyrus the Great, which is often regarded as the first known example of a freestanding royal tomb. The tomb's design is simple yet elegant, featuring a rectangular chamber with a gabled roof, and it stands on a high, stepped platform. The site also includes the remains of a palace complex and a citadel, surrounded by lush gardens and water channels, showcasing the Persian love for gardens and greenery. The city's layout reflects a sense of order and proportion, with a focus on harmony and balance in its design. Pasargadi holds a special place in Persian history as the final resting place of Cyrus the Great, a ruler celebrated for his role in founding the Achaemenid Empire and his commitment to justice and religious tolerance. The site is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a testament to the enduring cultural and historical legacy of the Persian civilization. The Behistun inscription, located on Mount Behistun in western Iran, is one of the most significant historical and archaeological artifacts of the Persian civilization. 
Commissioned by King Darius the Great of the Achaemenid Empire around 520 BCE, this massive rock relief and inscription serves as a monumental record of the king's achievements and the history of his empire. The inscription is inscribed on a vertical rock face and stands at over 300 feet, 90 meters, high, making it one of the tallest rock reliefs in the world. The Behistun inscription is written in three languages, Old Persian, Elamite, and Babylonian, using cuneiform script. This multilingual inscription played a crucial role in deciphering cuneiform script and unlocking the secrets of ancient languages. The content of the inscription details the rise of Darius to power, his efforts to consolidate the empire, and his accounts of the various rebellions and uprisings he quelled to maintain stability. It also presents a summary of his reign and his vision for just rule. The Behistun inscription's historical significance extends beyond the Achaemenid Empire, as it provides valuable insights into the ancient history and languages of the region. Today, it is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a testament to the cultural and historical achievements of the Persian civilization.